this game felt exactly like the first time we played them, which I think was like the night before Thanksgiving all the way back in yeah. November, where it seemed like we were just dominating them most of the game um, and then kind of just took our foot off the gas a tiny bit. Bucks just made a ridiculous run on three-point barrage um, and made the game end up looking a lot closer than it was. So again, like a win's a win. They got super close. I think they maybe had the ball like once with a chance to tie it, but overall um, did enough. And then when it got down to crunch time, Tatum, uh, you know, the – the most unclutched player in the league, Jason Tatum, with eight points in the final two minutes, ten seconds to uh, put this one on ice. So, as we said off the top, a win is a win, and that is all that really matters. Uh, we knew that no matter what, we weren't going to take too much out of this game without Giannis, but I thought it was cool to see how they tried to push us around, tried to get in our heads, and how well we really responded. So, overall, pretty happy with the win, much as I didn't love, uh, you know, five, six-minute stretch there in the fourth. Young boy screws loose, they done stripped the bolts on them. Should have never sent them to pick up the work for them. Sprayed the park and had my shit inside the car. Marcus Smart Boy was shooting with a 36 on him. Said if he wasn't in a rush, they was all gone. All right. Greetings, shuttlings. Welcome to another episode of Chuddy's Corner. It's Wednesday, March 20th. Celtics just wrapped up uh, what turned out to be a pretty close uh, game against the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Bucks playing without Giannis. Celtics playing without uh, Drew Holiday and Sam Hauser. Uh, we're going to break down the game for you. I'm your host, Dugouts. With me as always, Chuddy. King Chuddy, how you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing great tonight. I mean, this is, you know, Christmas Eve meets the Super Bowl in, in Chuddy Land as we've got, you know, the best day of the of the year of the calendar tomorrow with the first day, the first real day of the NCAA tournament. So uh, I am probably not going to be able to sleep tonight. I got both my crock pots out, fridge full of beers. I got some uh, shrimp cocktail on deck, put in a pulled pork, meatballs, nachos. Uh, yeah, I'm doing yeah, well. I'm doing is, real well. <laughs> yeah, this is this is definitely uh, one of those bigger nights in the Chuddy household. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yep, very exciting stuff. Before we get to the March Madness, though, there was a little bit of madness in Boston, <laughs> uh, especially in that fourth quarter. So I mentioned yeah. it before. Celtics got the 122-19 to win over the Bucs. Uh, at one point, they led to at least like 18 points. I think it was the biggest lead of the night. 22, I think. 22. All right. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> great stat collecting. Um, so Tatum had 31 points, eight rebounds. Uh, Jalen had 21 points, also eight rebounds. Derek White, 23 points. Porzingis had 17 he went 0 for 5 from 3, so apologies to the Chuddy Bar Parlay Disciples. Uh, but, Chuddy, why don't you go ahead and break this game down for us, how this one play out. Yeah, it was almost like a tale of two different games. You've got basically the first three quarters and then the fourth quarter, uh, where it seems like you kind of – Two different stories, uh, as you mentioned, no Giannis, so immediately takes some of the shine off, you know, what we thought was going to be a really good matchup, maybe an Eastern Conference Finals preview, uh, you know, still a good game, plenty of firepower, but that obviously completely changes the math, as you mentioned, no holiday for us, uh, just bumped Horford into the starting lineup. This one uh, started out, I feel like, a, how almost all of our games have been going lately, where it feels like it's almost like a like a 400 meter relay where the first hundred meter is almost just like feeling it out going back and forth. Teams are even. And then it's like the second quarter is where we like hit our stride. And then it's like, all right, we're going to sprint out to a lead. It's exactly what happened again. Played well in the first half. We were making shots. They were making shots, moving the ball, 11 assists in the first quarter. Um, The offense has just been humming, humming and the threes were falling. Um, It's good to see, but you know, bucks hanging around second quarter was where things really got interesting. Um, And I loved watching this part of the basketball game. The bucks, you could tell, um, you know, they knew they were kind of out talented tonight with no Giannis. Yeah. And I think they also, they wanted to kind of send a message to us to get in our heads, I think, to muck the game up, to try to out top us. Game got extremely chippy. There was a lot of, a lot of yeah, chirping yeah. going on, a lot of physicality. Well, mucked it up. Refs were letting them play. Um, and really the biggest story of any of this was Pat Bev, <laughs> Pat Bev, scores a basket <laughs> on Pritchard, does the too small a gesture and from there Pritchard basically just turned into Michael Jordan for the next like eight minutes um that had to be the best stretch of his career I think he had 13 points like yeah four rebounds and three assists just in that like eight minute run in the second quarter um yeah he was he did a little bit of everything he he hit a pull-up three he had a hard drive like right through Connaughton like shoved him off got to get space for a layup uh he had a couple he Finally missed one three, immediately got his own offensive rebound, um, <laughs> set up Porzingis for like a dunk. He hit another crazy step back right over Gallinari. Uh, 
It, it was truly like he was in an unreal zone. You could tell that he, he had one that was super the, contest. One, one, three, I think that was, that was the Gallinari contest. one the where Gallinari he one, stepped yeah. back right on him. I think his foot was on the line, but still, it was just like when he made that one, it's like, oh my God, he's just like in an absolute zone right now. And credit to Missoula, he let him go like that whole second quarter because he was just the best player on the court. Um, he was making steals on defense. Like there was, he took it, whatever happened, he took it extremely personal. Exactly how you want to see someone like rise to that kind of game. He's bringing so much energy. He had that play too. He like ripped down a jump ball over Brook Lopez. It's like a foot taller than him. Uh, crowd was on their feet, and rightfully so. I mean, that was like the Peyton Pritchard quarter. Uh, Tatum had it too, but it was almost like the two of them were going back and forth. Like Pritchard was on Tatum's level for that run, um, and he was almost deferring to Pritchard a little bit. As anytime the double would go, he would happily toss it over to Pritchard, and Pritchard was driving past people. Pritchard even had one play where he kind of did that thing where the point guard would like sprint it up over half court, almost like he's running to the coach like he's gonna call a timeout mm-hmm. he almost like lulled Connaughton into it and then he just like cross left and blew right by him uh got all the way to the hoop and then kicked it out that's on the collapsing defense for a Derek white corner three it's just absolutely beautiful um like i really don't think that's hyperbole to say that was probably the best quarter of pritchard's nba career he was like the, the difference maker it was yeah. really really awesome to see that and that's was what... like uh didn't he have like 100 points in a drew league right, yeah like that? pro <laughs> amp like he was all, he was he was looking to go for the pro amp yeah <laughs> yeah uh yeah and rightfully so like i said he was he was feeling it it was almost just like a, all right get out of pritchard's way because he was flying up down the court he brought just such a crazy level of energy um and we were just like a step ahead of them for that whole quarter that's how i think we got out to that like 18 point lead or whatever again felt like a back and forth game where the bucks were playing well executing making shots um they tried to muck it up and it just backfired on them we i thought we rose to it i thought they tried to get really chippy with porzingis uh you saw they were hacking him a lot crowder like forearm shoved him threw him to the ground a couple times and uh Again, I thought for the most part, like Porzingis responded pretty well to that. He got to the line, made a bunch of free throws. Um, he was going down there, posting up, abusing mismatches. So kind of everything you'd like to see. And then Tatum in that first quarter was just awesome. Kept uh, making threes, making the right play over and over again. Great to see. Um, third quarter, more of the same, really. Just kept pushing. That, that was the Jalen Brown show. Jalen took over. Um and he was doing it all, and a lot of it was with Tatum on the bench. Tatum didn't even attempt a shot in the entire third quarter after he had, like, 23 yeah, points in the first half. I don't love that. <laughs> but we stretched the lead out by five. Like, we were playing amazingly. I, I can't even yeah. argue with it. We played so well. Uh, Jalen, awesome quarter. And it, was it like, was occurring to me in the moment that it's just incredible, even the difference from last year to this year, how much poise Jalen has, where he was completely running the show and making the right play. Every time he felt so comfortable, they're throwing doubles at him. He's making the right pass. They're trying to, you know, get Pat Beverly into like foul him and mess with him. And it's just not working. He's making the right plays, blowing by people. He was getting to the hoop, making some crazy finishes. He had one play where he just drove like right through a guy for an and one. He had another one where he drove through him. He didn't get the call, but he went up and under, finished with the left. He had a couple pull up threes, um, get into the mid range. Really was like an everything quarter out of Brown. So awesome to see it again. I think we had the lead all the way up to 22. End of the third quarter, felt like we were probably just coasting uh, to the finish line at that point. Um, <laughs> not so much. The Bucks came right out, started yeah. absolutely drilling threes, and it was kind of my key to the game was I said the one way they can kind of get it going is exactly what happened. It was Dame, uh, Beat, Malik Beasley, and Bobby Portis all just got super hot. They kept making threes. They went back to that zone. This time it kind of did muck things up. Um, the Celtics slowed down to an extent. I thought we weren't nearly um, intentional an enough. I feel a little like bit. They, I feel like they like it, they see it was like they slowed down as much as you possibly could slow down. Uh, like for, for I wouldn't there, say that towards but, the end when they had to pull it out, but I don't know. It was. I wouldn't say it was that bad. I would say it was honestly like I liked a lot of the executing. The shots just stopped falling, uh, and everything was going for the box. I thought the one thing we weren't being nearly intentional enough about getting the ball to the nail against their zone, especially with Porzingis, and some of that I thought Porzingis was almost being a little too timid. He was falling a little too in love with the three where there was times where I was like, just go down inside and post up like against this two, three zone. It's not, this is exactly why we got you. They can't stop you go abuse that. Um, and if they adjust to that, then you have Tatum run to the nail. And it was just, again, I thought we were making good reads, making good passes, setting up a ton of good looks, getting good corner threes and just miss after miss. So again, I think white Porzingis hit a few of those threes in this game. Pro- they never probably bring in Dame back in. We're not even talking about this. So I didn't think it was like the offense just crapping themselves, sitting on the ball, not moving it. Um, I thought just missing a lot of shots we had been making and then not doing a good enough job getting the ball inside, attacking the basket. Um, and again, the Bucks were just kind of going nuclear shooting on their end. Um, and then they were kept playing really, really physically, and the refs were letting them play a lot. I mean, you saw Tatum got hacked ridiculously hard, got teed up. They didn't call it. Um, Middleton and Dame were flopping. Like Al, that Al play should have been an and one. The Dame flopped so bad. 
That um, was yeah. That I don't know how. So did, brutal. Having to giving out text for those. That that like yeah. Have been, yeah. I, I thought so too. Um, and then there was one like I thought JB was right in position on Middleton. They let Middleton go right through him. Called it on Jalen. So just tough whistles. A ton of whistles too. It was a really good game. It was really physical. And then I thought they started kind of. The refs were injecting a little too much of themselves into the game. Um, so oh, it just yeah. got, like, choppy between the – Yeah, between that, between the zone, and then the Bucks just getting really hot. Suddenly, the, things got really tight, got all the way down to three points at one point. Um, and then Tatum, who, again, hadn't scored a single point in the entire second half, comes alive. And it, it was almost like you could tell we ran two awesome plays in a row out of the timeout and got great corner threes and just missed them both. And after that, it was almost like Tatum's like, all right, we did the right thing over and over again. It's not working. Like now I'm just taking over. Cause again, they really don't have a guy who can stop him. It's it's just funny that Malik Beasley is like the perimeter stopper. And he's a guy on most teams. We'd like hunt that matchup out. <laughs> so he's up there and Tatum. I think he was just like, all right, enough of this. Uh, drove right to his left, got to all the way to the lane. They fouled him. Tatum made two free throws. Next possession, ISO again, spin move right by Beasley to the left layup uh, four points in a row. Then Tatum again made a really nice move, got right inside, uh, just missed a short jumper. Porzingis goes up, snatches a ridiculous one-handed rebound out of midair, awesome. goes up for the dunk. Beastly. That put the re- lead right back up to seven. It was almost kind of a dagger. Um, well, And then um, give some credit to Jalen Brown. has had some free throw shooting issues for sure, but he went to the line with 20 seconds left, up two points. Uh, biggest free throws of the game, and he knocked them both down to put it away. So, um, <laughs> what, again. What do you do a minute earlier? <laughs> yeah, he missed the minutes free throws, but I thought that was almost kind of good. He Missing got a chance. Both is so wild. I'm sorry. Yeah, but like, no, for exactly. But that's why I was very glad to see he like immediately got a chance right away to like kind of put that to bed and be like, no, I'm not, I'm not like shook. And he stepped right up, drilled the two free throws to ice the game, um, which is obviously what you want to see. And uh, again, I th- this game felt exactly like the first time we played them, which I think was like the night before Thanksgiving, all the way back in yeah. November, where it seemed like we were just dominating them most of the game. Um, and then kind of just took our foot off the gas a tiny bit. Bucks just made a ridiculous run on three point barrage um, and made the game end up looking a lot closer than it was. So again, like a win to win, they got super close. I think they maybe had the ball like once with a chance to tie it, but overall um, did enough. And then when it got down to crunch time, Tatum, uh, you know, the, the most unclutched player in the league, Jason Tatum with eight points in the final two minutes, 10 seconds to uh, put this one on ice. So, as we said off the top, a win is a win, and that is all that really matters. Uh, we knew that no matter what, we weren't going to take too much out of this game without Giannis, but I thought it was cool to see how they tried to push us around, tried to get in our heads, and how well we really responded. So, overall, pretty happy with the win, much as I didn't love, uh, you know, five, six-minute stretch there in the fourth. But Yeah, um, just a uh, couple of things there. So, yeah, one I did, I did it was very noticeable. Quickly, the Bucks just kind of were like, all right, we're just going to sort of just try to f- out-physical you and, and – and- sort of throw us off our game that way. And I feel like that was kind of the book on us the last few years mm-hmm. is that teams, when they kind of would, they would, they would almost grind us to playing that kind of like isolation, just not moving in, in as quickly as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm glad that they, they did totally respond to that. I think uh, obviously in the case of Peyton Pritchard, they rose like way above it. Yeah. Um, that's just like, it's, it's just so hilarious too, just that it's, being Pritchard and Pat Bev that are like it's kind of like like the so perfect game. like neither one yeah exactly I was just so happy with all of that and it yeah. was like when you saw Pat Bev doing like the sad walk to the bench after Pritchard hit like the third three in his eyes I was like <laughs> I think he just Pritchard just like ended Pat Bev's whoever yeah. like Pat Bev thinks he is in his head like he's just a clown that was like such a clown moment for Beverly where it's like you're trying to go at this like ninth man on the Celtics and he's just absolutely fucking owning you like as bad as well, it's probably to the like point where your coach probably... has to take you out because he's yeah, going I mean, off so bad or Svi like... I think he was like I Svi's a little too too far down the totem pole so yeah um, right but it was just like, yeah, yeah was... dude you're very like you're not that guy moment where it's like you're trying to get and all of the Bobby Portis who was trying to get tough with Tatum and like immediately tries to back him down and Tatum just like picks his pocket it's like alright you think Bobby Portis Crowder and Pat Bev is like the three fucking stooges out there trying to be like the Bash Brothers, and it's just like, dude, stop. <laughs> yeah, he's such an Jake, annoying. How old is Jake Crowder? Clowns. That's he's got to be pretty old at this point now, right? Or yeah, I mean, really young when he was with us. No, he's definitely in his mid thirties. Um, I don't yeah. know exactly off the top of my head, but yeah, he's pretty old, pretty washed. But again, that's those three guys are all just in there to be like tough, 
assholes. <laughs> and it was cool to see us be like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was definitely nice to kind of, I think the best is when you can just respond to that just with like talent, just like just embarrass them that way. So yeah, um, yeah just love love the Pat Bev, Peyton Pritchard's little rival <laughs> with beef that was going yeah, on. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, I loved what they were doing early with uh, Dame. And not that they got away with it, but not that they got away from doing it. Mm-hmm. But um, I love just uh, Jalen. Uh, just medium at half court, like yeah. every single time, and like they'd yeah. be full court they'd be set, 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 Yeah, they'd be setting the screens up like right at half court, and have to just just forcing him to kind of get into an uncomfortable situation that quickly. And I think it yeah. worked for a while. I think he had two points in the first quarter. Um, yeah, you know, it worked really well. To, continue to work through the game. He's just such a high volume shooter. He's going to end up getting his points. I don't know exactly yeah. what he finished with in front of me. He get thirty two points, but it did seem like it was not that's crazy. Yeah, but it's like even the ones he makes, nowhere. some of the ones he even makes, I just like Jesus Christ, like you can't contest. Yeah, well, yeah. right, like I said, twelve of those were probably in the last like five minutes when they're basically just chucking to get back into it. And even those, it's like that one possession too at the end. Tatum had him like a friggin' glove, and he still just steps back and like makes the three. It's like you literally yeah. can't play better defense. So sometimes you just have to tip your cap. But it is also so annoying how oh. much physical how physical the game is and he's still doing that thing where he's like running and just veering his body like bumping into brown and they're giving him the foul it's like yeah drives me fucking um, crazy on the, yeah. other, on the other end of um what dame was doing kind of i think defensively it's hilarious um especially early in the game how much we were sort of just like picking out dame um and going he's, at that matchup yeah. when they took him out um down like in the fourth quarter when we were shooting the rebounds i was just thinking like i can't even imagine if like the supposed like best player, like this guy you traded all this shit for to come in, is like such a liability on defense. They have to sub him out in oh, like crunch time points of like games. Yeah. Just kind of see. I know that like you know it's not unusual to kind of do different like tweaks and stuff with wider, but I feel like that's not usually with your like superstar, star. like your best yeah. player who's out there tonight. Obviously with no Giannis, he's he's like their number one guy. It's just like mm-hmm. it's crazy. Like, it's like your coach doesn't even trust you to like just lock up a guy for like one possession, like. He they, you know, we and and after I mean what we were doing to him early in the game. Really? Offense, yeah, no, um, I, mean, I, I can understand why, but the right coach. That's just a crazy kind of like world to, to just think about. Like your best player is like just that bad on defense, and we were definitely taking yeah. advantage of it. Um, yeah, good to see, and something that if you know we do see them in a playoff series, I imagine that'll be over and over. Like every single, we have to put them in that action all the time. Yeah, exactly. Every single time, just set a screen. But it's also, (laughs) it still just cracks me up that you look at their other guys who it's like, Oh, those are their good defenders. And it's like Malik Beasley and Middleton. It's just like, again, why as good as the bucks are, like I've never, I'm too worried about this matchup because they don't have a single guy who can even like somewhat guard either of the Jays. So it's like, who do you think is their best wing defender? Like Beasley, maybe who's like probably a negative defender. It's like, okay. So he has to lock up Tatum. That's like, okay. So who's guarding Brown? Like Connaughton? Like it's just like you know what I mean. It's like the, the two matchups between those two guys, and those guys were dominating like for a lot of game, especially running their pick and roll uh, at Brook Lopez for a while. We were just getting a double and a wide open shot uh, every single time. Like Jace, Jalen and Jason were just going right at him, and there was nothing they could do. And that's the thing where it's like I just don't think this team could stop us in a series. Like when we're really focused and doing what we right. should be doing, we're gonna get great shots every single time, and like. I don't know. Even even it seems like on an off shooting night, like I trust the numbers that we'll get enough good looks and we can score on them in, in a big enough variety of ways where they have so many, you know, not great defensive players. Um, yeah, I mean the de- yeah the, exactly the defense is just horrible the team. So it, it, it yeah. I mean again it's it's a little surprising even that we only finished with 122 with the way things were looking. Like the after that first quarter, I think we only had like 32 points. I was kind of like, geez, it felt like we scored like way more than 32 points. Yeah. Just like with that, it was. Um, like they always say, barbecue chicken. Mm-hmm. It was barbecue chicken time. Uh, yeah, no, it I really. Fun. It, it was fun. Did I use fun, that right? Did I use yeah. that term right? Okay. No, they were they were All definitely right. barbecue chicken out there for a while. Um, um I think also uh, another thing too, if just getting back into the first quarter too, Tatum's kind of taking over that role as uh, yeah, like the the Lord of the first quarter. So we had 15 against the Jazz, 14 against the Sun, 18 against the Wizards, and he mm-hmm. had 10 points tonight in the first quarter. Um, a couple of those so without Jalen, but. Right. Yeah, but yeah, but still, I think I think well tonight I feel like the the whole idea was Jalen was like his fo- focus originally was to just put Dame, Guard just Dame. make Dame uncomfortable to start the game, and I think yeah. he did that pretty well too. Definitely. Um, but yeah, so it's just kind of nice to see Tatum again. The, the second half, obviously, you know, we extend the lead; it doesn't it doesn't end up mattering in the end. But I do think whenever Tatum is that quiet for that long, I just think in the long run it's not great because when the, when things do start to happen, he's got to kind of warm up, and obviously he did. In right. the last two minutes, you mentioned he had eight points in the last two minutes, but I just feel like 
I don't know. It shouldn't have even been getting that close. And I feel like if we were getting him more involved earlier in that fourth quarter, like it mm-hmm. might not have it gotten to the point that it got to. I mean, again, yeah. wins a win. We win by three. Who cares? We win by three. We win by 300. doesn't matter. But <laughs> um, I just yeah. think for him to go that long of a stretch right. without getting points is a little bit crazy. Especially but when he's know. playing well. He had like 23 points in the first half and was like kind of on fire. So I get that. But again, it's impossible to argue with the way the third quarter went. Um, and then I think it is just one of those things with, like you said, it's just, it almost takes you a while to notice. And then it's like, once they're on a 12 0 run and the lead's down to 10, then you're like, wow, uh, Tatum hasn't really done anything in a while, but again, lights, it's like my lights going out on me. See that you know, watching on YouTube. Uh Oh, it's like a John Collins situation. It all over again. It's it just keeps going off. It's not, I thought it might be like, like, you know, the remote batteries, you it just works well, like smack it? them and then they just work nah. for uh, four days or something like that. Uh, I might be, uh, I might be in for it now, folks. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But figure this out. Painful. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, no, I mean, I, I get it. It's it's like, again, it's it's hard to... Everything we're saying is kind of nitpicking at this point, obviously, with the Celtics. Well, yeah. It's like, again, it's it's one of those things where no matter what, you're going to kind of look at the results. And in a game like tonight where the threes stop falling, like, if again, if we make those threes and run away with this lead by and win, you know, it never gets within 20 or so, I don't think we're here like, man, quiet half yeah, for Tatum. I mean, if, we, like, if we, yeah, of course, if we make every shot we take, then we well, win yeah, but, every game by a billion, I'm just saying. Yeah, and we usually do. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I just think that I don't know. It's this. I just think that him did not have any points in the second half until those free throws. It's just kind of like we're just waiting a little bit too long to yeah. activate him. I don't yeah. Know. No. And again, I, like you, it, you can get it different ways. Like obviously, they scored points in the third. It didn't matter. But that whole right. stretch in the fourth. I mean, they went on what like a twenty-two to six run or something like that. I just feel yeah. like, um, you know, if he's kind of more involved in the offense, like. And I'm not even blaming, like, I'm not even saying, like, he needs to do it. I just feel like it just kind of happens, but I don't know. I guess. I just think if you if we actually went back and walked it through, like, possession by possession, I think most of the possessions would be like, nah, that was a good possession. And, like, a lot of times he was starting it. They send a double, the ball moves. And, again, I think White missed two wide open threes. Porzingis missed a corner three. And then Porzingis was, like, one of the – I thought, um, you know, I thought Porzingis played like fine, but I thought it was just. You mentioned he was zero for five on three. I thought he also missed a ton of those like mid range shots where he had a shorter guy on him that seemed like he almost always makes those, uh, yeah. especially down the stretch where it's like perfect. That's the matchup. Turn around. I was almost like back him down just like another foot or two, get like a, a big step closer, and then just rise up and shoot over him. And that usually that's either an automatic foul or he just like makes a bunny. Um, and so like he missed a couple of those. So again, I. Ah. There was never a point where I was like really upset with what we were doing. I guess that's it's just a tough balance to strike where you don't you know we get mad when Tatum like takes over takes over and goes like ISO mode. It's like we want them to keep running the offense. They are they're getting good looks and they're just not falling. And then it's like Tatum needs to be more assertive. So it's like I don't know. Yeah. It's just it's 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 a tough balance to strike. And again, you know, ideally that won't be an issue. But like I said, I, I think it's good at the end of the day that we got to see what happened when it got close and Tatum did score those eight points in the last two minutes. So it's like, all right, you want me to do this? Fine. I'll do it. And he did it. Yeah, he did. And he did. So it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I get it. But has Bobby get... Portis's three point shooting just like gotten way better or is he all, cause I feel like I, <laughs> he's always like, been sneaky years... good. But I, yeah, it probably has gotten a little better. But he's he's, he's streaky. All, they're so streaky. It seems like he makes yeah. one and suddenly he doesn't miss. Um, so it's the same thing. And I thought I thought Dame really got into a rhythm when they started. Um, and I think this has been a talking point, almost like a more macro theme this season, which is kind of how we're going to play defense against guards like that when Porzingis is in there. And I thought uh, Lillard got way too comfortable in the drop, and uh, there was a few times where he made Porzingis look pretty silly trying to help on that pick and roll. Um, there was one time where he turned him a couple times. He turned him like fully around and uh, it just didn't look great. And I thought that was kind of how Lillard started getting hot. So again, something to watch in like a playoff series when we do play a guard like that. We've seen it earlier against the likes of, uh, you know, Trey Young, guys like that. Obviously Lillard, you know, showed tonight. He's a guy gets off a pick with an inch of space and he's going to rise up. So Will be an interesting series to watch uh, if and when Joe makes some kind of adjustment, maybe meets him at the level, maybe, you know, has someone else uh, tries to hide Porzingis on a different matchup so that he's not involved in that screen uh, action. But I don't know, just something interesting that I thought was helping them a lot when they were making their comeback and started to, to step into some pretty good looks. Yeah. Is uh, how's, is this light? Is this too campfirey? I feel like uh, yeah, it's below me right now. It's like I'm about to tell a scary story. A little bit, yeah. All right, all right. That's it. The charger is fucking tiny. Sponsor, need a longer, longer charger cord. 
uh, sponsor. Shout out NickPredo.com. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I think a couple other things. This was – I'll play 38 minutes. That's, I guess I don't always look at his minutes, but that seems like – that might yeah. be – is that like a season high maybe for Al, 38 minutes? Um, I doubt it's as high, high, but, I mean, it is up there. I thought Cornette, it seemed like barely played. I don't know if he played at all in the second half. Um, oh, I wanted to talk about the Cornette-Tillman lineup. Uh, Tillman was that, awesome. I, I agree, but the Cornette-Tillman yeah. lineup they had to start – I think it was to start the fourth, maybe, was that – when they were in there, I forget, but it was I'm not sure. I did not, I did not love that. Uh, yeah. I, I was excited about it, and then <laughs> I quickly was like, oh, okay, let's, maybe not maybe, tonight. Let's, yeah, it might have been, it might have been during the third, actually. But there yeah. was, it was like, it was like Cornette, Tillman, uh, I think like Tatum, uh, Pritchard, and yeah, someone else out there. But I, I, I don't think we could, I don't think we could play those two guys both at the same time. <laughs> that just, that's yeah. wild. But I yeah. respect trying it. Yeah, well, I mean, and we tried, we did it one of the last few games, and it worked great. So, um, I don't hate it. I just Luke had a rare, like he wasn't bad, but he, I feel like he's been having good games every time out there, and he just had kind of like a quiet nothing game tonight. Didn't do much out there. Fell back uh, to earth a little bit. Yeah, he got stuffed a couple times when it seemed like he had a good positioning and wasn't making a huge impact. So I think he didn't get a ton of minutes. Probably why Al played a little bit more. Um, obviously they have a ton of size, the Bucks, and we're trying to throw it all at us. Um. I thought Tillman, though, played great. I love that play. I think it was either end of the first quarter when he was in there. He got switched on to Dame. Didn't let Dame go by him on the perimeter. Uh, Dame passed it away, and then he basically knew that there was it was just so Dame could get space to try to attack him again. And Tillman stayed right on him um, and denied the pass, and he just picked it right off, like, almost at half court. It was so cool. Like, how many big guys mm. in the league are freaking doing that? So I was like, that got me pretty fired up. Um, I also loved the way we executed the two for one at the end of the first half where we got the rebound with like 33 seconds and it was Jalen and he did his like hard push sprint and just pulled up at the free throw line, like a hard jab and a pull up and just hit like a perfect little free throw, uh, elbow free throw jump shot. And it was like, yeah, I love that. Go hard, pull up short shot. So it's like maybe Jalen should be the guy doing the first part of the two for one. And then we got it back and we slowed it down and Tatum did his thing. And he got to his left and made a crazy shot off glass. And I was like, I think that might be the best we've that executed a, that, that the that two possessions. Insane. That shot yeah. he had off glass there. With the line. Yeah. That was um, crazy. But that I was cool to see. scal has got a little spooked from mentioning the two for one. <laughs> He's got, think... clearly it's been a talking point, not just. Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like I haven't heard it in a while. And then we actually ran a pretty successful one. So maybe that's the, Key to it. I don't know. Keeping Scal away from calling it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He got called out, obviously, by Drew uh, last time. Yeah, like, I feel like I feel like they laughed about it, but it's one of those things where it's like you can't un you can't unhear it though. You know, you know it's not that right. Quiet. Yeah. Oh no, it's it's not going away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else do I have. Uh, I mean, obviously, Scott Foss tried to put his prints on the game a little bit. That Tatum technical just mm-hmm. seemed a little bit like stupid. It also Vintage. seemed like for the most part the rest of stayed out of it until that until the fourth quarter um, yeah not to say that they're the reason necessarily for the, the comeback or whatever for the for the box but there's a uh, combination it of is, things, just the inconsistency annoying whistle me. yeah right because they were letting so and, much go earlier and i even like I, to the point where we were kind of discussing like is the league laying off like a are. lot of these calls they used to make and it, it definitely felt that way for those first three quarters um uh, but you know, a little too little involved yeah, and that's obnoxious to see. Especially, again, for a game that it felt like they were mostly letting them play at, like, a very high level of physicality and almost like a playoff-like game. And then they're starting to call a few chippy ones. And then, again, the Horford charge that they called would really piss me off. And, again, I think really that was bad. when the Bucks were in the heat of their run. They had cut it to 12 from, like, 22. That would have been an and one for Al to put it back to 15. Instead, it was their ball, and they uh, immediately came down and hit three, cut it to nine. So, again, just kind of these, like – Big momentum plays where, again, it's like, that's what I want us to do. And that was a sick pass by uh, Tatum, too. I'm pretty sure to set that up for Al. And Lillard was still moving. Al, like, stopped. There was barely any contact. So, it's again, and that's one where, I'm like, like, in a playoff game, game, that's a no yeah. call. Just... No, I mean, he went flying. It was, it was ridiculous. ridiculous. It really was. I, if I was the ref, I'd be fucking bullshit that I got duped like that. Yeah, exactly. It just must be embarrassing to fall for that. Yeah. No. I mean, they go back and watch the tape. I hope um, they're kicking themselves in the locker room right now. Yeah, you got uh, anything else on this game uh, in particular? Not really. I thought um, 
I thought Joe did a really good job calling timeouts. There's a few times earlier in the game where I kind of felt things just like going a tiniest bit sideways. And I think he'll do a good job now where he'll give us almost like one possession to figure it out where they're on a run at most. He's like, all right, if we don't score this trip, like I'm calling timeout next time, no matter what. I thought he yeah. too were really good. And we came out and got a great look uh, off both of them immediately. Yeah. Which I think he had a couple too uh, where they were with the Bucks were in some quick putbacks, And he was like, he was calling them just to like yeah. on that too. Or just like, like you said, where it's just like, all right, that's like two plays in a row where there's no one there, like box yeah. counter or something like that. So like, yeah, he had a rage timeout on that Connaughton putback. I think was one of them. Yeah, yeah, that's about, what I'm which, of. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, he's just. I mean, little things where it's almost like with Co- we we talked about it. But I think last year when everyone would kind of criticize Missoula, and I think with NBA coaching, even if you like you know a lot of basketball, we probably realistically only know like. <laughs> 10% of like what the coach is, is and isn't doing. So a lot 5%. of it. You, well, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm saying like, even, even if yeah. you know everything about basketball, you still like don't know what he's actually like. So they're supposed to be doing. And if they're, yeah. you know, he could be saying all the right stuff and the players aren't listening for all we know. So again, it's hard to judge the coach, but I think the point is like, it's a lot easier to tell bad coaching than good. So it's like easy to point out when like someone doesn't call a timeout, his team goes on a huge run and you're like, what the fuck? But when the coach like kind of is doing all the little things, it's easy to just not notice it almost. So I think that's kind of like the sign of Joe's coaching progress. The fact that most games we just kind of like don't notice it (laughs) versus last year where it would be like, oh my God, he did this. Yeah. On the other side of the coin. So I, I had like, what happened with the play where Doc called the timeout? They went to commercial, they came back and we got the ball instantly. Like I missed that split second play, but it's like, I heard, like the whistle and I'm like, wait, what the hell? Like, cause they just came back from first. Remember I texted you. I was like, did, yeah. Did, did, <laughs> um, did, did they even they show just, it on TV? Cause they didn't even, yeah. they didn't even mention it in the play by play or anything. I think they just dribbled it up and like immediately passed it right to us. It was just like a wicked fast turnover. <laughs> and so they, they had like a few of them the in that corner. Out. They were turning it over very out. sloppily turning it over. And I thought I mean, yeah. we, were, we were playing great defense, which, uh, I love to see. Yeah, it, we were getting a lot of points off those turnovers too. I think we had. Yeah. Well, actually, we only had sixty. I thought we had more than that, but it did feel like they had a lot more turnovers. A lot of those were early. Yeah, yeah, they had fourteen turnovers. We had nine. So, yeah. um, I think they had a. They might have had eleven of those in the first half. I'd have to go double check, but yeah, but yeah, no that that uh, that was a hilarious play right there. Just dog using a timeout <laughs> and then um, instantly getting the ball turned over. Yeah. Um. Okay, is that – if that's all – Only me, other things I thought, uh, Porzingis, I mentioned I wasn't in love with – I thought he could have been more aggressive, especially in the zone. And, again, a little over-reliant on threes, which, again, is – Threes not the fall. Bar. <laughs> yeah, uh, didn't love that. But I thought he did have some great passing. A few really, really nice passes that uh, I was like, oh, maybe give me, like, a second take. Like, wow, he's going to pass the ball like that out of the high post. Like, that's uh, – I think it, I think Gorman or Scal even said it was, like, a Jokic-like play at one point. Um, I was going to say. Yeah, and it really was. One of them was. So he, had a couple, he had a couple nice passes. Um, so that was cool to see. Fan of that. And then I just thought it was interesting at one point Gorman called uh, – Mentioned, was talking about the game and said we're playing the Bucks, our biggest rival in the East. And um, I don't know. I feel like that's not the case. Is what there? I feel like they're our stiffest competition, perhaps right now. But I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I feel like the Heat are a bigger rival, and maybe even like Philly might be a bigger rival. Like we've, I don't I know. We've, we really like only what, played the Bucks like once. I think what he probably meant it by was like the biggest competition. I yeah, maybe because I don't know. I mean, he's got yeah, he's got to know that. I would I would say. Miami, I'd say is probably. I'd say Philly. Just they don't ever beat us, so I don't know. Like Philly, yeah, it's hard to call that. And like that's what even what Embiid said. But it's like uh, I would say, like as far as who I would like dislike more. Like I would say I dislike the Heat and the Sixers definitely right. more. I don't like the Bucks, but um, yeah, I think I, I guess that's what he means. I feel like but we've always been the two best, but we've only matched up the one time. Like and we beat them, and I don't know. I feel like there isn't like that much of a rivalry there. All, even all the big regular season games, I feel like we've like stomped them kind of. It just, I don't know. Yeah, I get it. I like I said, I get what he's saying. Who would I, you say? Who would you put as our number heat. one rival? The Heat. Yeah, played them what, three Imagine out of four years. We played rival. the Heat three out of four years in the East yeah, Finals. Yeah, yeah. Like, how could there be a bigger right. rival? And they've all gone to us. Yeah, all gone to yeah, seven, yeah. exactly. Yeah, we played them back to back seven game series in the East Finals. Like, I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure that's our yeah. biggest rival. And then I right guess now. that Mike either. Is just completely mailing in, which I don't understand. <laughs> um, or it's, it's the heat. Like it's I think he not. might have just meant. I think he just might have meant the biggest like threat by yeah. that. I don't know. Maybe a different use of the word rival. Yeah, yeah. Just thought it was interesting. I guess. 
but yeah, no, I would definitely say I would say the Heat, and then again, Sixers ish. Like those games, those I just love those series. Those ones are always just the best. Like just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> just like, whooping like your little brother. Um, right. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, before we get it over to uh, around the NBA, I think we should give a quick shout out to Amina Smith. Last broadcast tonight. Um, the Celtics pre and post game. So, um, yeah, it's going to be you know, ESPN, I guess. So they're poaching, poaching some of the talent, but obviously for her, that's pretty good. Did you know that she's married to like a chief? Like yeah. The Chiefs? Yeah. All right. They talked, they were talking about it a lot uh, around the Super Bowl. The Super it was a main Bowl, talking yeah. point. Oh yeah. yeah. She was pumped. So I wonder if that just makes She was on the field after she was on the field after the game celebrating. Yeah. After the Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So good for her. We'll be missed for sure. Um, oh yeah. I think yeah. She's great. Tom Giles is going to be stepping in. So yeah, I um, saw Mannix on there today. I really don't want to see more Mannix. So uh, if, <laughs> I love Amina, but if she's going to make me watch more more Mannix, I'm not going to be very happy with we her. We might be holding a grudge. <laughs> yeah, he was even pissing me off tonight with the shit he was saying on the pregame. I can't even remember what Go it was. I was like, uh, I'm trying to remember what he said. It was something. It was. <laughs> it just was a blind rage, no matter what. Yeah. No, I mean it was Warren. What's Mannix deal? He I feel like he comes and goes. Like, is it? What does he do? Does he do anything to, else on stick NBC? Stick to sports? boxing. Well, that's what I say. I always see him on boxing. Like, does he do anything else on NBC Sports? Like, I'm when he's pretty sure his dad sports? like worked for the team, and he was a ball boy, and they like felt bad for him, so they gave him this job, and he just like, no, oh, stop. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. Is... That's like seventy oh. percent true. <laughs> I'm willing to say. Right, he's, well, he's a classic nepotism. Invite case. to come on the pod. I would love to see Mannix Chud debate in the pod. Yeah, so be great. invite. Would love. Ken come on the pod and fire back. Um, no, but I think it is going to be – I think it's Tom Giles, what I read, at least in the one article I read on the topic. That makes sense. Um, but, yeah, so uh, good luck. Good luck to Amina Smith. Definitely. And all our future endeavors. Well, this might also go back to the point we were saying, too. It does, would Abby – Right. Would Abby want that job? Would she be back in the, the studio? Sideline? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Does the Kayla Burns – does the Kayla Burns – Yeah. That, no, Kayla Burton. Burton. Yes. Does she work for NBC or she just kind of won those? I don't I think, think she works for ESPN. She works, does work for ESPN. She does sidelines for college. I think football maybe. Okay. But, uh, all right. I don't know. I don't, I'm unclear. I, think, I guess you know what, what I think the, would be a great plan is. I think they should move at, if Abby wants move Abby into the booth and have, uh, Chuddy's corn to start doing the sideline reporting. I think yeah. it'd be great. Lock in the Chuddy, Chuddy head demographic. The ever elusive chuddy head demographic. That would be smart. Yeah, they'll get the chudlings. Yeah, you got the chudlings. You got the power. <laughs> that, um, that is the move. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's hope that's they, the move. Let's hope they oblige and realize that. Um, all right, so kick it over to you then for around the NBA. What do you got for us? Uh, that's going on around the league right now. Yeah, a few things going on uh, around the NBA. First of all, we haven't seen our good friend Marcus Smart in action for a long time, but we did get to see him make a nice appearance the other night as he mm. uh, came off the bench to get teed up twice for calling out the officials. He got tossed from a game that he was not playing in. Uh, love, love seeing your player get tossed in street clothes. Great leadership. Um, <laughs> and he had a point. The Grizzlies are playing great again. They made that a, made that a game against the Thunder. The Grizzlies just fight hard that team never quits cool to see um and you know it's cool to see a nice marcus moment like that made me smile um for sure also gotta give a shout out kind of was clowning earlier the season on jalen green of the rockets thinking he was uh bust worthy almost untradeable he's turned it on he's played great this month um i know you know the they say not strength. they say not to overreact to march NBA basketball that it's, you know, Mickey Mouse March and all that. Um, and I think Jalen Green even had done this, did the same thing last year, but he's been even better this year. <laughs> he's averaged over 26 points, uh, eight rebounds last week, got player of the week for the Western Conference. Pretty cool. And the Rockets Ooh. have actually won six in a row, uh, four in a row now, I think after Shangun went hurt. And uh, it looked like this thing was sewn up. I think they're only like two, two and a half games behind the Warriors for the 10 spot now, the final spot in the play-in. So sneaky oh. making a push, um, which would be cool to see this get kind of interesting down the stretch. And a lot of that is... I really want Lakers-Warriors, though. I know, um, but it would be cool to see them not even make the play-in. would also be fun. So uh, I feel like no matter what, oh, probably going to get a that would be that would be, e that would be Rocket. That would be Eme LeBron. So that, that could be my spin zone for why that one would also be good. Yeah, or if they catch the Lakers. Lakers and Warriors are almost tied, so they could catch the Lakers too. And then you get Ime yeah. against the Warriors again. Like That's so. fine too, yeah. 
Yeah. And that's LeBron. Enough. That's got that's LeBron missing the playoffs entirely. So that's right. That's a good one too. So it's right. So it's like we get to watch any it in the regular combination of that you could talk yourself into it. Really. Exactly. Well, right. We get to root for the Rockets because it's an absolute doomsday scenario if either team doesn't even make the play in, and then if it doesn't work out, we get Warriors Lakers in an elimination game anyway. So it's like yeah. it's all good. Wow. And then they can both still miss the playoffs. It's the nine ten playing game is in good hands right now. Always. Yes. Exactly. Um, and that's really what it's all about. So. That's good. Um, obviously, everybody saw, as seen by now, the amazing Anthony Edwards poster dunk the other night and uh, my reaction that went viral <laughs> on social media um, in live time. We yeah, should also shout cool. out that, obviously, some amazing – that dunk is going to get all the credit, but we mentioned you had texted me later that night that Jalen Johnson had an awesome uh, poster dunk on Austin Reeves. Chet Holmgren had a filthy poster dunk tonight on um, Taylor Hendricks of the Jazz. Another Jazz player. I had to do a double take to make sure it wasn't – Poor John Collins again, um, but Is it was he not. Out or was he out? Last he played. Last no, he. I think he played. Oh. He didn't actually miss the game. Um, oh, okay. Maybe he was out, but I don't know. But I that it's like absolutely brutal. And I think I think kind of justified what I said about how you just have to milk the injury because he got cleared of the concussion, and it was just a contusion, which is essentially a bruise. So it's like you just have a bruised face, like dude. After using a poster eyes like that, I feel like that just again is making it worse to be like, yeah, not only that, but I'm injured with a bruised face. Like, come on. Yeah, <laughs> like, I think we, the, we the Edwards, the Edward one, Edwards one that night was obviously I've had the most violent, like crazy, but the uh, Austin Reeves one was the way worse, like screen grab that you could get from the Austin Reeves. Yeah, one. but that one like, is just like Austin Reeves is much smaller and he didn't jump; he was like taking the charge. Where John Collins is like yeah. bigger than Edwards and went up to like try trying, to contest, yeah. and it was just like yeah. no. Reeves that's just sat the there and got like, like a mask. Uh, the other one was like, yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, that was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, got, we've if, seen if lots of good dunks like that. His face from that, that would be a, that'd be. Yeah. A tough no, I mean, that. you know, it's, you know, the Edwards dunk was vicious when another guy got out pure face nuts. And we're saying that's like probably better outcome was the guy who got the face nuts. <laughs> and right. the, the other guy, it's like yeah. that yeah. kind of puts it all in perspective. I think. Yeah, that really does. <laughs> Do you see the guy on the, 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 Zoom in of the guy in the Timberwolves. I forget who it was. Who's like reaction to the dunk? Like, the dunk <laughs> yeah, it was Kyle Anderson. I think right. Kyle Slow Anderson. mo. Yeah, was right yeah, next yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was like, awesome. Oh, oh my god, it was like very similar to the one that you had. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, yeah, two peas in a pod. Uh, Slow mo and myself. So that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Um, all right, so that's cool. Speaking of the Wolves, they played a f- almost funny game last night. It was supposed to be a huge game. Obviously, Nuggets and T Wolves. They came into the game tied forty seven and twenty one, uh, right behind the Thunder for the one seed. Supposed to be a big game. I mean, the Wolves obviously have kind of built their team to stop Jokic and the Nuggets. They might be their best competition matchup wise. Unfortunately, they obviously had no Carl Anthony Towns. They also had no Rudy Gobert because of a rib injury, and they had no Nas Reed because of a head injury he suffered. That those are literally the only bigs they play like in their rotation. Um, mm-hmm. So it would be kind of like the Celtics not having Al Kristaps or Cornette. And before we traded for Tillman. Um, so, like, the Wolves literally had no bigs. They're playing Luca Garza, who you guys, you know, shout out March Madness, you guys might remember from Iowa. Not much of an NBA player, though. They were playing Kyle Anderson at center a ton. Um, and the Nuggets got up by as many as 18. And credit to the Wolves. They played awesome. They fought back. Jaden McDaniels had one of the best games of his life. Um, Anthony Edwards was awesome, although he didn't score a point in the fourth quarter, but he did have 30 points. Um, these guys got going. Conley made a couple clutch threes. They got it all the way down. To a three-point game, Ant had a shot at the buzzer that would have tied it, uh, rimmed out. But it was almost like a moral victory for the Wolves where they played, played oh, great. Oh, he's not clutch. He sucks. Oh my god. I know, right? Is that what we're supposed to do when a guy misses. Uh... I if Tatum missed this shot, we would. Uh, if Tatum scored zero points in the fourth quarter and then missed the shot that Edwards missed, his defender literally fell down. So it was like a literally uncontested three at the buzzer. Did he score zero points in the fourth too? Yeah. Wow. Um, but I mean, again, they're missing all yeah, their other bad. players. It was yeah, the second yeah. night of a back-to-back in Utah. They're gas. They're playing the best team in the league, and he was at one point kind of single-handedly keeping them in it. And again, they made a crazy comeback. Almost won the game. Played really uh, well on Jokic, even kind of despite the lack of size. They said, "Kind of, we're going to just dare you to bruise us inside and score." Which you know, Jokic was happy to oblige. He had thirty-five and sixteen, only two assists. Didn't have a single assist until the first, fourth quarter. So um, I feel like that there's kind of actually a lot of stuff that like teams and the T Wolves can take away as a positive, knowing that, you know, obviously they're probably not going to be without their top three bigs. If they play them in a series, uh, two more regular season meetings between those two teams too, which is kind of crazy. So hopefully they'll have some big guys back. Cause those would be fun to watch. Um, also want to mention, we had talked about how well the Knicks have been playing and that continues, but OG and Anobi who came back 
has gone back out again um, and has said his elbow is still not right. So, again, they still don't have any update on Julius Randle. Mitchell Robinson probably lost, and now OG Ananobi back out. Uh, a little bit concerning for a team that's been playing great and that Ananobi has been such a big part of it. But they continue Did you to see win. anything about, like, there's, like, concerns that he, like, doesn't play through pain or something like that? Yes. Is that Was that, like, a real thing, or is that just, like, a NBA aggregator? I mean, again, it's like – Maybe I, didn't get <laughs> I don't know. I don't know him. But like, <laughs> that's well, what people... no. I mean, like, was that like? Was there an article that like went with that? Like, was there like an actual report? People that around him or is from it just the Raptors like NBA hooper. No, it was like Raptors reporters said was said that it was like a known thing. I guess that he just like was not a guy who will play through pain. So right. I don't think it's like a, a thing, but it's just like I love that New Yorkers just, gonna get so pissed. Yeah, it's great. It's perfect. <laughs> great match perfect. great match perfect, yeah. um but very interesting stuff um and then two other things i want to mention one as i'm sure you guys have all noticed you can stop refreshing no power rankings have come out this week i kind of just bailed on that too much going on again i'm in pure oh, march wow. madness mode power rankings will be back next week don't worry not a lot of changes i can tell you i had started it off Top four was exactly the same. Top five, Pelicans remain strong at five. So that was the same. Nothing crazy to change. And also, again, it should be all about college basketball right now. That's one thing, too, I wanted to say. I mentioned this today to you. I think the NBA needs to take a a, a small hiatus to honor March Madness and let them have the full focus. Um, You know, March NBA is already a total slog. Uh, They want to put an emphasis on the regular season. Let's – I've got a perfect idea. Let's move the All-Star game up. Make it the actual halfway point in the season. Give them a break then. Play this stretch of games, and then the whole league gets a nice one week off right before the final push before the playoffs. Almost like a bye week for everyone. Everyone gets to just focus on brackets. March Madness all weekend. Um, I mean, again, these are the best four days of the year, purely from a tournament perspective. And we're looking at the schedule. We've got the Celtics-Pistons game staring at us Friday night, right in the middle of the action. Yeah. Just why? Like, that's, yeah. I know I know the leagues aren't, like, in cahoots together, but it's, like, it's all basketball. Like, support amateur ba- amateur basketball, the feeder system for your league, NBA. Let them showcase this event. Help it out. Encourage your players to watch and to be involved. Like, there's just no need. Give them a break. Uh, so, again, that's that's my proposal. We've had some proposals for Adam Silver lately. This is my my latest one is give us the, the March Madness bye week before. Then, yeah. we have, then we get a final, you know, two, three weeks of the regular season and then the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I don't see what the big deal would be to just at least uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Four ga- four days without a game. That's essentially like the all-star break anyway. Yeah, that seems like um, a no-brainer. Because, me. again, that yeah, that Pistons game Friday, that's going to be, I would say, what would you say? It's probably about a 90% chance it's a Saturday morning show. Yeah, for us, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I would say that. And, I mean, honestly, I'm – so, you know. Chuddy Heads, if you wake up Saturday morning, don't panic. It, it's no, no. Be it'll, yeah, we'll it definitely will. Um, but, yeah, I mean, honestly, we've done this now, what is it, 70, almost 70 games, uh, six, high 60s games this year. Yeah. I can honestly say, you know, I love my job. I would do this for free. Uh, I genuinely enjoy coming in here, talking Celtics immediately after the game. Like, we – we are fans. We love doing this. I am yeah. always super excited to come in here to watch the Celtics and then to talk about the Celtics. Like I would do this without a microphone, without all the glitz and glam, without the big paychecks and this and that, whatever. That's not why we do it. Shout out the sponsor. Have, having said that this Friday game is probably the first time I've looked at the schedule and been like, Oh, like really? Um, and again, only because I love the tournament so much. I want to be fully immersed in that. I've got my four screens set up. I know I'm going to have to drag the fifth screen out to almost begrudgingly watch Celtics Pistons. Um, so again, it takes a lot for me to not be like super locked in and fired up about a Celtics game, but if ever there was one, like this is it. So I guess maybe in a way you should almost be thankful that it's just a Celtics Pistons game. Um, you know, maybe the Celtics will rest yeah. everyone and so they can go to the tournament and we won't even have to worry, but either way, uh, just frustrating as a Celtics fan, but as a basketball fan, you know, I want to embrace this. It's arguably the best days of basketball in general at any level. It's the best postseason tournament in all of sports. Um, so just, you know. Embrace it, promote it, lean into it. Like, you know, the NFL wouldn't yeah. be playing games during, like, the NCAA playoffs. Like, it's just... All right. Well, that's a terrible example because the NFL, I feel like, would absolutely do that. I feel, I don't know. The NFL... At the same they time? They don't, bend, as... they, don't fold, they don't fold for anybody. They moved, They already moved in on Christmas. They're moving in on Black Friday. Like, they're moving in on all the days that other sports have had. The NFL... All those sports that they're, like, kind of competing with, but not college football, I'm saying. 
Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I think that if you gave, if you gave the NFL an opportunity to have a game like, uh, you know, leading up to or like following any huge college football game, they definitely would. The NFL's. Well, I get, I do get your overall point. I'm not trying to debate that point. It's more just a comment. I think just the NFL is it get the get off the tracks. So we don't want to hit by the train type thing. But I do, I do Maybe. like the idea in general. It would be nice. Um, I do think that. Uh, you know, as someone who's watched March Madness with you several times before, um, <laughs> trust me, Chuddy Heads, uh, we're doing you a favor not having Ben try to, uh, not trying to have Chud here uh, record the podcast um, during March Madness because we would be getting uh, a very depleted attention span. So. <laughs> yeah, that's probably fair. Um, yeah, you know, but, we got, um, I'll do my best to focus right now. We got the uh, first four game going on in Dayton, Colorado taking on Boise State, uh, 43 43 in the second half. You know, pure you March that shit first game. I saw it went in overtime. Uh, Grambling, Grambling State held on to win. Gra- so. uh, b- brackets busted. Yeah, I hate to see it. Right, sorry. <sighs> it's uh, too well, bad then, I had, I had <laughs> Mountain State or whatever. Who did they play? Morgan State was no, I don't even. It was remember. MTST. I thought I saw it on all my Montana own. State. It was Montana State. Montana State. Yeah, I had them going pretty far, so my brackets fucked. As always, next um, year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, but yeah. So uh, another suggestion to Adam Silver: please at least take it into consideration. Yep. Um, for all of he's us got here, it. he's got. So it. yeah. So again, just just the just to make sure we're in a uh, programming note that episode will be coming out. Saturday morning or so, mm-hmm. you know, before tip off of the March Madness and stuff like that. So if you're driving over to a friend's house, heading to uh, go watch March Madness somewhere, the, the podcast should be up. In yes. Time for you to and we will m- definitely overcompensate for making you wait with uh, some excellent March Madness breakdown in the, allow- or in the around the league segment. So don't worry about that. Oh, wow. Yeah. There we go. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So we have. I got one the... more. Hold on, I got one more. Oh, 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 and this is a good one. I don't know if you know about this. I haven't talked to you about this. Have you seen the new uh, video podcast that started? That's uh, sweeping the the basketball world by storm. Oh, the LeBron and uh, JJ Redick one. Yes. Yeah. So is it Wayne you... that I think it's gonna kind of be? I mean, I didn't. I haven't. I didn't watch all that. I watched most of the clips that came out. Mm-hmm. Um, I was definitely clip bait watching, but uh, why? What? What are you? I mean, I saw that they like <laughs> so, freaking like wine around just, like a yeah, table. Exactly. Like, like so the, I'm I'm kind of torn on this because the actual so the actual basketball commentary is excellent, which is yeah. like obviously very unsurprising. Mm-hmm. But they're kind of like holier than thou approach to it, as if they're almost having this conversation that no one can understand but them, <laughs> while they're kind of just like almost flirting with each other, and just like downing wine while constantly like talking about how much they love wine and like the show starts off where LeBron so is I like mean, I, those are the it's so over the top see. they have so many wine bottles and glass on the table they're talking about the different wines they brought to like share with each other uh they each brought like three bottles they're sitting there like keep really filling each other's glasses they're talking about <laughs> the different kinds of wine uh LeBron brought one that he says was like he loves it because it was from his first like championship year um it's just it's just so much it's so like it's like as, like you said, I love the idea and I think there's some good stuff, but it's just like LeBron can't help himself almost from so much of the stuff he does. That's just like, oh my God, like yeah. so eye roll when they actually are just talking like X's and O's and like he's given some inside basketball stuff. It's cool. But there's so many references to them almost making these like comments as if like, yeah, like I know like you and I get it, but you know, like, you know, like tell, explain to our fans, like the audience out there might not really understand. It's like, first of all, this, we know that dude, like it's, you just, right. just, just explain it's like, it. Don't every, the amount of times that they're like, yeah. All right. So to, so to explain, like to add some context and it's just like so much stuff. I was like, yeah, dude, like anyone who's listening to Reddick and LeBron, like break down X's and O's probably understands like basketball. At least so, some stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, and they're just making it sound like there's no way like you could possibly uh, understand this. And then. There was, I want to shout out the Rice to Ricky Sanchez podcast, which is, uh, I know they're kind of a rival as their Sixers podcast, but they they do a hell of a job. And they had a great breakdown, um, so I don't want to steal their thunder. You can go listen to it, because they went through almost the whole podcast breaking it down. But some of the funny parts were, like, Redick asked LeBron, like, what do you think is the most important thing 
uh, like the number one most important thing for like a basketball player to like reach, like become like a superstar in the yeah. NBA. And his first answer was knowing the history of the game, <laughs> which is just like <laughs> so not <laughs> that important, like at all. It's like, like should he like I promise? Shot or his yeah. post presence? Like no. It's like I'm, I'm pretty, telling you, if he just knows how many games the 1968 <laughs> yeah. five. I'm like won. almost positive I know more about the history of basketball than like Anthony Edwards does, but I just. <laughs> I don't think that's like quite making up the gap in talent. <laughs> so oh my God. again, there's just like a lot of these just like ridiculously smug, clearly like planned out lines yeah. that make the whole thing like over the top <laughs> cringe. A lot of like smelling their own farts type of thing. Yeah. Um, and it's, they're also playing this like weird, like almost romantic music in the background. It's just, so again, I think it's a good but, idea. Yeah. I need to and then another good point the that they brought up on, um, the rights to Ricky Sanchez pod when they were talking about it was that they're, oh, I guess, shout out the rights. To, what is it? Rights to Ricky Sanchez, a uh, very famous Sixers podcast. It's really good. But um, <laughs> they made another great point that I guess in the intro, they said that they're going to do one episode a week, like for a whole year. And they were just like, there's no chance LeBron does more than like eight of these before they just like completely yeah. run out of things to say. He's made all his points. And then it's like, wait, I'm going to go sit down with like JJ Reddick for another well, hour. I just drink wine with him like every yeah. week. It's right. mostly every week. Just and like also once a week getting absolutely cocked with JJ Reddick. Right. They're both probably going to be like, this is, this is getting right. a Well, and it's also just like such a funny far cry from it. Wasn't that long ago where he's like zero dark LeBron 30 for playoff mode. And now he's yeah, like, no, he, no, I'm just going to drink lot. Right. Well, but now he's like literally doing a podcast every week and like drinking well, wine and just like gossiping about the league. <laughs> well, that's literally, it's like, it's like the South Park episode where it's like, it's like a tasting. So it's classy or whatever. Like that's yeah. like basically it's like, yeah, like, tweeting is like, that's crazy in the postseason, but like going on a fucking bender with JJ Reddick, like it's wine. So it's all right. It's classy. right. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite the show. So, um, no, I do. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't seem exciting. It sounds yeah. like it's going to be hard clips. to not watch kind of just because it's going to be like what people are talking about. There's going to be good stuff in there and there's going to be so much stuff to like make fun of. I think something will probably go viral for it to be like a meme almost every episode. I'll, it might be the only podcast where I make sure to like watch the YouTube just because the ambiance of the show is so funny. <laughs> you almost like need that right, like, to where, fully understand what's Where happening. are they going to keep meeting? They were in some like dark room that looked like it was a set of like a Game of Thrones meeting with that like Littlefinger and like yeah, the, it like, and, uh, of, like a Tyrion again, would be like sitting like, at yeah. like it was just <laughs> so like, outrageous. <laughs> it was like that's what it seemed like. I, I uh, terrible geez, lighting, geez. like I don't know the whole thing. So I guess um, you know this is all a long winded way of saying that um, you know LeBron saw what the. Chuddy's Corner was doing to the NBA podcast game, and he just does not, you know, can't stand anyone else having the spotlight at the credit, so he's jumped into our space We definitely got to start having some glasses. We put LeBron on, on notice. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> so we should just go completely the other way, just like, oh, like, yeah, this is a, what do you have to oh, This is a bush light. Uh, it's like age <laughs> from the year that uh, the Celtics won the last championship. Yeah, it's probably from, like, 2018. <laughs> It's been in my fridge I since like, I yeah. moved. Uh, my college fridge. Yeah. yeah. Well <laughs> aged. A little bit more alcohol yeah. than the other keystones. So. <laughs> it's very special to me because yeah. it's actually 7%. So. <laughs> it's gone back and forth from being stored at anywhere between 92 degrees to yeah. negative 11. <laughs> yeah. It's like a very – it could yeah. live in almost any environment. Right. It survives in all different environments. That's yeah. funny. Exactly. Yeah, I felt that we might be on something other with that. <laughs> oh gosh, that's funny. Yeah, but yeah, no, that'll be. Interesting. I definitely agree with the sentiment that there's no way that he's doing that 52 times a year. No, we'll see. Um, I think they like, said the over under. Is, like, they said the over under at 13 setting. and a half episodes. They're like, how many episodes will they actually do over the next calendar year that both guys are in? And I think they settled on yeah. like 13. And well, and I was half say, too, it would be. It would be funny if LeBron just starts like. Just like sending like other people, just like to like fill it, just like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Trying to think of like who would be a funny person for that he could send, but I don't know. All of his just like former cronies, players, like play with yeah. send Zajunas Logowski right. out there. Yeah, Booby Gibson. <laughs> this episode is JJ Reddick and Big Z as they Norris down, Cole, like, Booby Gibson. Yeah, that'd be good stuff. Yeah, shout right. out Big Z, Mo Williams. Big um, Z. Oh yeah, Mo Williams. Who was the guy too recently? That was like JR was Smith like, can get on there. Oh my gosh. Now that would be a good one. <laughs> um, but okay. All right. Yeah. So shout out to the, uh, their podcast and shout yeah. out to the Philly podcast. 
Yep. Um, so what do uh, we have? What is it? We were just saying the Pistons coming mm. on Friday. Uh, we saw the Pistons like two days ago. <laughs> uh, just like don't <laughs> don't just like fall into the trap. Let me see if I can do this. Don't right. fall into the trap. Uh, I did see that they just lost uh, Os- Osir Thompson mm-hmm. for the year, and also a guy also with the last name Anderson. No, Beef Stew Isaiah Stewart. Isaiah Stewart. Okay, Anderson. Nope. Um, just lost those he's, two guys. He's the crazy so one. Even more. Stewart is the one who uh, oh yeah popped few bags in the face. Back. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, yeah, pop the guy in the face. I forgot about that. Um, so they're missing them. So, you know, we'll see a lot of more bench guys. Uh, our guys have to play well. Wouldn't be surprised to see some of the top guys rest. Don't fuck it up. Uh, yeah, they'll pretty much cover the matchup. I think you nailed it. <laughs> Solid recap. Don't get hurt. This is a don't get hurt game. That's fair, yeah. And don't, and more importantly, yes, don't get hurt. <laughs> All right, so I will see you. I'll see you before that for the madness. Looking forward to it again. If you're listening to this podcast and it's Thursday and it's before 12 o'clock, uh, DM at, at Chuddy's Corner. We'll get the info to enter Ch- Chud's 23rd annual March Madness bracket. So um, if you want to get involved in that, open it up to the Chuddyverse. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that about A little, little breaking news on the show, too, Kevin Durant. Ooh. Just Breaking. past Shaquille O'Neal for eighth all time on the NBA scoring list. So, wow! All Rob's right, easy. top eight, eighth all time. Not bad. No, it's not bad at all. It's a good stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, seems decent. Oh, excuse me. All right, that's it for the show. Um, make sure you follow uh, us on social media. Me at Doug uh, at Doug underscore outs on Twitter on X. Him at King Chuddy. Check out the show page at Chuddy's Corner. That's the same on all social media platforms. Uh, also, make sure you're checking out Chuddy's Corner.com. Uh, the Power Rings, which will be back next week. I feel like we got we to gotta mix in some kind of like punishment for missing last week for you. We'll think of something. Mm. Shout out at, tweet at Chuddy's Corner with any good punishments for the uh, for missing out on that. Mm. Um, and, yes, check that out. Leave a voicemail for us, too, on the Chuddy's Corner.com page. And, lastly, a special thanks to our sponsor, Nick Perino real estate nickprano.com check it out for any of your real estate needs in the area all right chud we'll see you uh for the madness and then chuddy heads we'll see you back here saturday morning for the recap of the uh pistons game on friday all right take care peace out chuddy heads <laughs>